It is a fact that most people are utterly confused about what they hear from various sources regarding the Quran as to whether or not it is peaceful. We listen to Muhammadan Muslims reciting very conciliatory and harmonious verses from the Quran and then we hear others which are the exact opposite. Can you elaborate? You are absolutely right, of course, because it is extremely confusing. The problem resides in the fact that most people, whether they are followers of Muhammad or not, do not know, have not read, or have not been told the facts about the history and background of the alleged revelations of the Quran. With all due respect, I find this hard to believe. Let's take some examples. Quran chapter 2, verse 256 says, Let there be no compulsion in religion. Truth stands out clear from error. Or, chapter 109, verse 6, To you be your religion, and to me my religion. Or, chapter 15, verse 42, Allah is our Lord and your Lord. Unto us our works, and unto you your works. No argument between us and you. Allah will bring us together, and unto him is the journeying. By no standard of morality or logic can any fair-minded person call the above aggressive, hate-mongering or war-mongering. You are, of course, 100% correct. But I have not yet explained the background that would unravel these anomalies and misunderstandings. May I continue? Go on, then. What I am about to explore with you is not anti-Islamic propaganda, because this information can be found by anyone interested in the subject, either on the Internet or in the relevant books as they were and are written by the Muhammadan Muslim scholars themselves. Let me demonstrate. The alleged revelations of the Quran went through two very distinct periods with irreconcilable contents. The first period is called the Meccan period, starting in the year 610 AD and ending in 613 AD. During this period, Muhammad was a man alone against the whole of his own tribe, the Quraysh, as well as against every single other pagan Arab, bar the few family, friends and slaves who believed in his message. Muhammad, after all, was actually trying to overthrow and overturn all their centuries-old beliefs. He was attempting to convert them from paganism to monotheism. He was doing this by attacking, insulting, and denigrating all the beliefs and traditions of the Arabs that had existed for centuries. He was obviously perceived as a devil-obsessed or crazy person as the Quranic verses of that period duly report. During this period, the verses were as passionate and as powerful as those of the Hebrew prophets of earlier times. They were also conciliatory and reasonable. The verses you quoted earlier, each one of them and several more, originated during the Meccan period, the first and conciliatory period. For almost 13 years of passionate preaching, Muhammad was only able to convert an abysmally small number of people of less than 100 souls. His tribe mocked and laughed at his antiques and alleged revelations. I use the term alleged because neither the Quran nor the Hadith tell us that anyone else besides Muhammad was a witness to any of Muhammad's declarations. In the year 622-623 AD, Muhammad's fortunes changed dramatically when some men of the Aus tribe of the Medina pledged to protect him and accepted, accepted him as their leader and in return as the messenger of Allah to intercede on their behalf so that they end up in paradise with unlimited carnal, sensual and sexual pleasures when they die fighting for the cause of Allah, that is, fi sabil Allah. Thereafter starts the next period of alleged revelations.